This channel is all about our family's move towards homesteading. Just completely normal, everyday city slickers who quit the city and are trying to live a more unconventional life, really, in hopes to not only find uh, health and contentment and independence and resilience for our own family, but documenting it to encourage other people that you can just be a complete moron, really, like I am when it comes to a lot of this stuff and you can find your way. And really part of this, if not most of it, is about disentangling ourselves from dependency on systems that are not good for our health, are not good for our families, are not good for the environment or the economy or for our relationships. And so though most of my videos are gonna be how I learned to make sourdough bread, or this is how I make a roast last four days, or stuff like that. Renovating our Airstream, what it's like having livestock when we eventually do. We do have horses right now. I've had videos on here about that. Sometimes I just want to pepper in why we're doing this, maybe in part to just remind myself why we're going through all this trouble. And I think it's important to talk about that because sometimes it's easy to feel like it's just too difficult and that it's just a lot easier to get takeout and to do DoorDash or to do whatever else it is that I used to do all the time. Not really thinking much about how my actions that I did all the time, little actions that I did all the time every day, created a whole life that actually made up a really big picture. And I think it's often those little things that we take for granted. And so that, those are the things I hope to document here, but one of the things I've been able to do more now that I don't work in TV news is read to my daughter. Now, I didn't have a daughter in TV news, so that's one reason why I can read to, to her more now. But if I had been in TV news when she was born, or if I was still in TV news now, I would rarely be home. I'd be leaving at at least 8.30 in the morning and coming home around 6.30 at night. So I'd get up right after she gets up and I'd get home right before she goes to bed. And I would probably not do a whole lot of reading, much less anything else. And we can talk all about quitting my career and how that's opened up space for family and everything else. And it was a great decision and I 100% would never go back. I love being a mom and I love being able to raise my daughter. But one of the things that I can do now, like I was saying, is I can read. And my mother sent this book to us a little while ago. And you may remember Aesop's Fables. I think that's what this is, uh, part of the Aesop's Fables uh, collection. And there's a story in it called City Mouse, Country Mouse. And I was going to read it because I was reading it to my daughter the other day and I was like, that's deep. That really symbolizes a lot of what we're doing. Maybe she'll grow to understand that someday, but right now she just likes looking at the pictures. So uh, this is what it looks like. You can maybe see the, the mice here. And there's a city mouse and a country mouse. And if you can see in the picture, the city mouse is wearing a suit and the country mouse is actually wearing overalls the same color as my overalls, purple, uh, which I have that are insulated, which come in very handy on a day like today, match this jacket actually. And uh, it was one degree last night, so don't knock the insulated overalls if you haven't tried them. So this is how it goes. I'll start at the beginning. City mouse, country mouse. Once upon a time, a city mouse went to visit his cousin in the country. The country mouse was happy to see his cousin. The country mouse did not have fine food, but he was happy to share what he had with the city mouse. The city mouse turned up his nose at the country food, and he invited his cousin to have dinner with him in the city. No sooner said than done, the two mice set off for the city. At last they came to the home of the city mouse. It was very late at night. And basically they show up to this uh, table, this fine dining table, as you can see here, uh, 
set, I'm guessing, by the humans who live there, where the mouse is. The country mouse led the city mouse right into a grand dining room. The leftovers of a fine feast were still on the table. Soon, the two mice were eating jam and cake and all that was nice. Suddenly, they heard growling and barking. And you can imagine what that is. And if my fingers worked, I could read faster, but it's really cold out. All at once, the door flew open and in came two huge dogs. Both mice ran for their lives. You can see the picture here. And I should say, uh, these pictures were illustrated by John Walner. Thanks, John. And thanks for being on my YouTube channel without, uh, uh, <laughs> without knowing it. So both mice are running from the dogs in the fine dining room. The country mouse made up his mind to go back to the country that very night. What good is fine food if you can't enjoy it? It is much better to eat plain food in peace. I love that last line. Basically, what's the good of fine food if you can't enjoy it? It would be better to eat plain food in peace because it really has a lot to do with much more than food. And this journey from conventional living to whatever you want to call it, homesteading, off gridish living, just disentangling ourselves from the centralized system around us, does take internal work too, to transform the outside. Because what what I have found, and, and I think others that I've talked to have found, is that the reason we often stay in that old way of being is because we have these identities attached to it based on ego like the city mouse who turned up his nose at the country mouse and the country mouse's dining room and the country mouse's simple food and we think in order to make it or to be somebody or to prove something we have to we have to win those the system's awards and we have to win its applause and we have to be connected to the right people the right jobs and go on the right vacations and have the right pictures for instagram and this this journey that we're on and that a lot of people we know are on is one where in order i think to to really do it we have to let go of all of that i, I was just talking to a former coworker who's still in the tv business and going back and forth about whether she should take a new job that she knows deep down she you know is probably going to lead her down the same path as her old job and it became very clear to her, she even said it to me, that she just feels like she needs to prove something. And that her, you know, really her identity is so wrapped up in that profession that she'll feel like a loser if she leaves. And I can totally understand that as somebody who was in the business for a long time. Feeling like you're just gonna be a nobody, I guess, because you've associated the brand and the lights and, you know, people knowing you at the grocery store with who you really are. And that's not who you really are. Um, but it's easy to believe that. But the thing is that that trickery, I think the marketing that we're constantly inundated with to buy things that are really about buying identity, that consumerism, is meant to keep us thinking that identity is related to all of that stuff, that our value is related to that stuff, so that we'll stay there. So we'll feel, instead of feeling like we're just not going to eat somewhere, we'll feel like we really missed out. We'll really missed out. Or if we didn't go on that vacation, or if we didn't buy that car, we really missed out. Not that it's just a car, but that it's an identity. It's, it's something we really need to have meaning and purpose. And so like I was saying, it's very hard to move and transform on the outside if that part doesn't transform on the inside. I was just interviewing a doctor for my news analysis channel, which is my other channel on YouTube and other platforms because I get censored on YouTube a lot. If you're interested in censorship, media bias, I do all that stuff uh, on my other channel and the link's in the description, but check out alisonmorrow.locals.com if you're not familiar with it. That's my community where I post all of my interviews and you can post questions for my interviews for people that are making headlines after being censored. So it's a great community to be a part of if you're interested in that topic. But the reason I bring that up is because the doctor is also a homesteader. He and his family are, are raising livestock. They, they milk their own cow and uh, are gonna start having classes to teach other people how to do it. And some people might think that that's uh, not connected, but really food is very connected to medicine. 
And I was thinking about how in order to decentralize from the system and systems around us and to regain this, 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 uh, you know, transparency and resilience and, and, um, and, and value of just like our families and, and the land around us, when we are dependent on the conventional food system, we end up staying dependent on the conventional medical system because we get sick with all the diseases that the conventional food system has to offer us. So then we go to the sick care model of conventional medicine and pharmaceuticals, and we need health insurance to pay for it. So now we need a job that gives us health insurance. So now we we're in this professional world so we can have health insurance to pay for sick care because we have diseases because of the food system. And because we have this job, we can't be ourselves because if we say what we really think on social media or we tell a coworker the truth or we speak up to our boss, we get fired. And, and cause that's the climate that we're in. I know personally because I lost my job over that. And so we, we, we lose along each step of the way, we lose part of ourselves and it might be easy to think all of these little things that we do every day are not slicing our identity and and throwing it to the dogs basically in the city mouse country mouse if you think about it the dogs are the the control really right they're the control that chase the mice out of the dining room and and so we have to start thinking like each one of those places that we we sort of hand off to somebody else or or we don't um, consider in this in this journey because our identities are so attached to it are really places where someone else has control over much more than just the little things you know they they have control over our very uh, our, our very relationships and our abilities to be ourselves to be who God created us to be because like I said you have the food system that keeps you dependent on the medical system, that keeps you dependent on the insurance system, that keeps you dependent on the job system. And now you're working your nine to five or eight to six or whatever it is. And you're like, well, I can't say that. And I can't talk to those people. And I can't be in that protest because I'll lose my job. And I need money for this and this and this and this. I live in a city. My rent is high. Utilities are high. And they told me I need this $100,000 whatever truck in order to in order to survive so i just leave that with you because as i was reading this book to my daughter it really made me think about going from city mouse to country mouse and that final line about you know what is the point of all these things that we chase after that our ego is chasing after if you can't enjoy them because those dogs are chasing after you always they're nipping at your heels always, whatever they are, and they're everywhere. It would be much better to just eat plain food in peace, even if no one knows who you are anymore. It's just you and your family. No more awards, no more fancy cars, no more job promotions, no more parking spaces because you're employee of the month, no more cocktail parties where we can brag about we did this or we did that. Just, just the every day, waking up, raising your family, making food, just the basics. What's wrong with the basics? I guess that's just, that's the, that's the question I have for myself and for all of you that are watching this that are interested in this. Are there places where we're like, well, that's, that's below me because we're still living in the city mouse mentality. Thanks for watching this and leave me a comment about your journey. I'd love to hear how you're going from city mouse to country mouse. Even if that all that is, is you're still living in the city and you're canning your own beats. That's cool too. All of those little places are places we're starting to disentangle our lives and to, and to uh, reclaim that value that we're told belongs to someone else. See you next time.